What's up everybody, 915Mag here doing a video today. I wanted to do a short video, but uh, first I want you to see the two Blackhawk helicopters right there to the right hovering. Um, if you look real close, you'll notice you can see little, little dots and those are soldiers rappelling down the rope because they just finished graduated air assault school. So hats off to those guys. You can see right there, maybe if you pause it, you can see the little dots, but pretty cool. Something very cool of being uh, in El Paso because we have the 1st Armored Division which is the station right here in El Paso. Pretty sweet. And I was also part of 1st uh, AD back in the day but I was uh, communications. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 180. Right now I have all the flow off and I'm doing a water change on the tank. Um, the water changes that I'm doing uh, are not very frequent. Uh, once a month at that and it's basically just a 20 something gallon but it's working um i am dosing mentally dosing i'm still using the aquamax uh two part uh because it has the elements in there calcium and alkalinity you can see my monte caps are growing some of them took a little hit from the last time and uh let's take a little look underneath the water and things are growing like crazy uh, growing into each other which I'm gonna have to trim some of that coral and uh, maybe station it somewhere else in the tank. The cool thing is that a lot of my corals that have taken a hit for example that green monopora just about the center of the screen started off as a little tiny uh, nub because I had back in another video I had the green and the red monoporas growing and they were growing so much that they were shadowing. So I fragged them and moved them out the way so that other things could grow. But that little tiny green monopora was just a little piece. Now it's it's a good size right there. Um, the green and purple uh, monopora that are growing branching um, also took a serious hit when my alkalinity flew. And it's growing back pretty good. I got this bird's nest right here looking pretty sweet. Also took a hit, but back to normal. And uh, everything else is looking okay. Uh, I've been maintaining my tank. Something that I've been wanting to mention is I have a bunch of carbon. I have a bunch of GFO. I have not been using carbon or GFO on my tank at all. The stuff that I use to keep the water clear is basically just filter socks. Um, but like I said, I, I'll have to show you guys this huge thing of carbon that I have. It's like a big old cheese ball size container full of carbon now the purpose of this video though I wanted to show you is I wanted to mention hitchhikers hitchhikers can uh, you know destroy your tank and for a while I had a lot a big problem with Asterina starfish and you'll see these in your tank if uh, you're just starting off uh, they reproduce rapidly and they create a huge huge problem for me because they like to eat zoas they've even ate my uh sps in my tank and i've shown you in some of my videos uh where it actually happened i did go visit one of my lfs's yesterday and the reason why is obviously to pick up some cleanup crew i picked up some turbos i picked up some emerald crabs and uh there's no secret and i'm not afraid to tell you guys but I have a bubble algae problem in my frag tank. I've been manually removing frags, picking off the bubble algae, and then pitting the frags back in the tank, right? Um, and I'll show you how I did that and do that, but I got some emerald crabs, and I'm gonna try, I'm hoping that two of them will be okay for my 20. And I'm gonna pit just one of them in the 180. The reason for that is because once they're done cleaning up the 20, then I can go ahead and dump them in the 180. They'll be a lot easier to catch in the 20 gallon with some tongs. I'm not going to be grabbing them with my hands just in case they uh, bite. But I want you to take a look at this bag. I'm going to empty out the snail bag. I got quite a bit of turbos. I went for the big turbos because um, that way it will be a little bit harder for my Melanaris wrasse to start eating snails. In case you didn't know, they eat your snails, they eat your crabs. And occasionally you're going to have to bump up your supply of turbos and cleanup crew. But as you get things from the store, from the LFS, from your buddies, 
you guys are always going to dip your corals, but you can't really dip your snails, can't dip crabs, you can't really put them in that kind of solution, but you can inspect the uh, snails themselves. I happen to notice that they had the Astorina starfish, like I told you, and they had two of them in this tank, and just two. I just want to show you, just two Astorina starfish will quickly multiply into hundreds of Astorina starfish. I'm going to show you the legs. It just, if one of the legs pops off of the starfish, um, you're done. If you don't pay attention to it, a lot of this stuff is just taking your time, inspecting the each individual snail, which I did really hard once I found the uh, two different Astorina starfish, as you can see right there. Little, lay, loses its little leg, reproduces itself. Then you have a ton of starfish in your tank. Um, you'll see them early in the morning, late at night. And if you have a, a whole bunch, you'll see them during the day. Of course, you can get a harlequin shrimp. And then a harlequin shrimp will eat all those little guys. And you'll be good to go, especially if you have those. But you can't dip this stuff. You can't. Uh, so you got to really inspect your your uh, your things. Um, I'm not mad at the LFS. I still support the LFSs. And, but, you know, just a little precaution for you guys to take before you add these guys into your tank. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, a little bit of my experience in reefing, some things to look out for. If you have any suggestions, comments, go ahead and put them down below. Uh, but these emerald crabs, hoping that they go ahead and do some damage to the bubble algae. I do take out my frags and pluck whatever bubble algae I have. And the reason why is because if you have any zoas, the bubble algae will attach itself to the frag plug and just completely cover your zoanthids or your pallies or your whatever coral that you have. Same thing with hair algae. These guys will clean up a little bit of that. But mainly these turbos are going to do damage to that hair algae that I do have in my tank. It's going to keep my overflows clean, the glass clean. And uh, I'm looking forward to these guys. I got the biggest ones that he had. And I'm going to go ahead and use them, see if they uh, clean up the tank. Uh, as you can see, I'm using these tweezers. I picked them up from uh, Amazon. They're like 20-something inches of tweezers, and they're pretty good. But these are the little bad guys right here, and uh, glad I was able to find it. I did pick up the snails and totally inspect it, make sure there was no more that I could see. But I'm still going to keep my eye out on that for any more of the Asterinas. And uh, if I have to, I'll go ahead and reintroduce a harlequin shrimp into my... 180 and so that way it can keep things clear well guys hope you guys have a good one thanks for watching enjoy the uh, your day and uh, you guys take care like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one